Well, the, the kind of casting uh, philosophy that Francis and I had on all these films, including The Godfathers and <clears throat> Apocalypse Now, we, we go kind of in depth. We see dozens, hundreds of actors, usually on both coasts in New York and LA. And Apocalypse Now was pretty much, we had a, a lot of interviews, went on for weeks and weeks, seeing a lot of people, some, some people that we already knew. And then after some weeks and weeks of, of interviewing guys, then we went to a screen test. And we, uh, we went at a, a sound stage, small sound stage uh, here in Hollywood, where uh, a lot of commercials had been made. And uh, it was a typical Francis Coppola style of testing, where it was kind of free flowing. It was not a formal thing where the, somebody waits in the waiting room and then brought in. Everybody was standing around kind of trading parts and, uh, and getting to know each other. Mike, would you read uh, Kilgore? Uh, Glenn, I'd like you to, to read... Uh, no, I'll, I'll wait for a minute. I'd like uh, Tommy, that's, you read uh, Willard. Uh, Freddie's gonna read Chef. And uh, Sam, you read Lance. And Albert, you read Chief. And the problem is this. You guys are fresh. You want to get your boat from here to there. These guys are beginning to get weird. Francis and I like the interview process. We like talking to actors. We spend a lot of time with them. And then usually end up testing the ones that we feel are the most right. How fat can they get? Let me ask you a question. How much money you got on those tracks? Well, during the testing period, we tested uh, all, all kinds of, uh, of actors, even Nick Nolte, who, who was a kind of a rising star. He hadn't become a big star. We saw one of them goddamn tracks coming right out across the fucking road, slopping water all over the place. The four guys, uh, Frederick Forrest, of course, was kind of obvious because he had been in the conversation for us and he was kind of family with us. It wasn't even testing for that. We just gave the part to Freddie. Sam Bottoms uh, was one of the ones we interviewed. He was a kind of rising young actor. He was still a teenager then. Oh, I, I didn't know what I was doing then. She was, uh... man, she was my dream. We had tracked him and his brothers. So uh, they've been an acting family from Santa Barbara. She wanted to see me sometime. So uh, she worked over at IBM and we'd get together in a lunch hour. And my car and yeah. she had this leather skirt. <laughs> no. <laughs> leather skirt. Short leather skirt. And uh, I'd, I'd put my hand in her legs. Come on, man. Oh, oh God, she... what are you doing, man? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I, ha I, I gotta say it. And she'd get really turned on. And in my van, we'd just go crazy. We'd do everything. Everything. Come on, Lance, what'd you do? She had the most fantastic body, the most incredible leg. Had great tan. Come on, you guys, <laughs> stick with me. Larry Fishburn, I had seen in a TV movie, If You Give a Dance, You Gotta Pay the Band, which a friend of mine had written. And he says, there's this kid in this movie I wrote, you better check out. So I always kept Larry Fishburne's name in mind and uh, <laughs> we brought him in and he tested. Where are you from? New York. New York? What uh, part of New York? Brooklyn. Brooklyn? Where's your zip gun? A what? Your zip gun. Don't tell me you don't know what a zip gun is. Hey. That? <laughs> Shit, I thought you all carried zip guns. What are you doing with that? I don't know. We're Brooklyn, huh? Yeah. I hear the guys from Brooklyn are really bad. Yeah, they bad enough. How bad are you? I don't expect you want to know. You drafted or you volunteered for this? Drafted. Drafted, huh? Yeah. Am I boring you? I'll let you know. <laughs> he told us he was 17 or 18. He was really 14. 
but uh, we didn't find that out until we got to the Philippines. Albert Hall, I had seen in a play. Francis might have been with me. I can't remember what the play was, but we have remembered this, this actor. And he, he was not a guy that had done many film roles, if any. And I said, I want to know what this special massage was, and then she got embarrassed. Special massage is with the hand. <laughs> I said, you've just been giving me a hand massage. Now, what is this very special massage? She didn't want to answer that. Just said I was a very number 10 GI. I said it over and over again, and I kept asking her. Finally, I said, I'll pay you $4 if you, if you tell me. That seemed to get her even more. She said she'd show me. I said, no, I want you to just show me. I just want to hear about it first. And we sat there looking at each other. She turned red and looked down, giggling. Very special massage is, is the mouth. <laughs> 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 what now? What you do? What happened? That's when the rockets hit the place. They hit it three times. I think she got zapped. He had the perfect uh, quality of a captain, and he was easily the one we wanted for it. Well, there were these four characters who, who were the regular guys on this boat, and then there's Willard, the character Willard. We thought we had Steve McQueen for a while, but then he decided he, he couldn't deal with going to the jungle for, he thought it might be two or three months, it turned out to be a year and a quarter, so he was right if he could if he couldn't take it for three months. So he, he passed. Um, we might have even considered uh, Jack Nicholson or something. But all that before we got to Harvey Keitel. Harvey Keitel uh, was who we chose for uh, Willard. And somehow it just wasn't working. And at a certain point, we made the decision. And uh, I had to go over to Harvey's hotel and give him the news. It's not that Harvey wasn't a great actor. He is a terrific actor, great actor. So we had to shut down the movie and recast. And uh, so Francis and I uh, flew back to L.A., cast Marty Sheen, who we had tested for Michael, the godfather, so we knew him and we liked him. Went back to the Philippines and threw Marty into it. And only uh, after the deed was done did the press even hear about it. To find the extras to fill out the army characters, we tried to get military cooperation. I remember going back and forth with the Department of Defense and the, the bureau that they had to deal with movies, and of course they did not like our script. And uh, they were always nice and kind, but they wouldn't give us any help whatsoever. There was uh, a lot of Americans who were, couldn't get into uh, medical schools in the States, so they would go to the Philippines and study medicine, get their degree in the Philippines. We used some of those. There were very young kids that were going to American schools there because their parents were you know, in some business or something out there. So some of the GIs that you see in there are actually 14 years old, 15, uh, but in a uniform, they. they look fine. Cheer up, son. In one sequence where uh, the Playboy Bunnies, we have a whole audience of GIs there. We had everybody in there. There was, uh, I think, Francis' sons were in there. I think Marty Sheen's sons were in there. Just to fill it out. It was always a, a big, big hustle to make sure we could fill out the army with uh, what, what we had access to in the Philippines. It was never easy. The Hmong in uh, Kurt's compound were people that 
lived way up in the mountains in the, in the Philippines, who in some way were racially related to the real Hmong people in Vietnam and looked just like them. So we sent uh, one of our production assistants, uh, a girl named Eva Gardos, who went on to be a film editor and a, and a director herself. We would send her up to these villages way up in the mountains, and she would make friends with the village, and uh, she br would bring back uh, the right uh, Hmong for that sequence. Today, uh, I hear directors are just looking at tapes and uh, kind of making their choices through tapes and not spending too much time on the interview process. That, that's just not the way Francis and I like to do it. Can we take that helmet off? It looks ridiculous. <laughs> it's a fun period for us. <laughs> we love actors and we love spending time with them. It's a lot of fun. <laughs>